Hello. I'm Iraq Glass. You may remember me from such educational sock puppet films as Yetis Don't Live in Yellow Yurts, A Tale of Mythical Creatures in Himalayan Interior Design, and Jessica Rabbit, How We Loved You, A Study of Cartoon Sexual Deviants. Today we will embark on a thrilling journey into the depths of the legal system and look at one of the frequently overlooked areas of law, the Dying Declaration. The Dying Declaration is an exception to hearsay. We've recreated the tragic deaths of several sock puppets to help you understand how this exception works. Let's watch the unfortunate death of Mr. Carton. Mr. Carton is about to die. About to be beheaded, actually. Now, Mr. Carton, who, mind you, was a marginal sock puppet, but a quality literary figure, knows he is going to die, and that his impending death is rather imminent. It's a far better thing I do than I've ever done before. Aw, oh, shut up. Mr. Carton, Mr. Carton, may we have a word? I know this isn't the best time to chat, but knowing you're going to die, are you likely to lie about anything? What? In Idaho v. Wright, the Supreme Court said that someone about to die is not likely to lie. Do you mind? I'm about to be beheaded here. I'm about to die, and I don't intend on lying about anything. Let's give a moment of silence to Mr. Carton. Moving on, the reason the dying declarations are allowed as an exception to hearsay is that impeding, impending death is thought to remove the temptation to falsify statements and therefore similar to an oath. But desire for revenge or self-exoneration or to protect loved ones may continue until the moment of death. That brings us to Susie Q. Don't let Susie Q's Rachel Ray demeanor throw you off. This puppet has problems and a nasty habit of washing down Vicodin with booze. She gets her pills from the pool boy, with whom she's having a rather cliché affair. Hey, don't tell them that. Hey, you're kind of cute. Want to have some fun? I, I don't feel too good. Uh, yeah, no, I still don't feel that good. Debbie? Debbie, yeah, Debbie, Mitchum's doctor gave me these pills without a prescription, and he told me to take them with wine. Well, well, I'm, Debbie, I think I'm dying. I'm dying. Instead of admitting to her affair, Susie Q's pride and desire to protect her family from gossip made her lie. And by the end of the next year, the honest and good-natured doctor is on trial for the wrongful death of Susie Q. But enough policy. I'm sure you're wondering what statements count and when they can be used. Dying declarations are only admissible when there is a homicide prosecution or a civil case. The statement must also be made when death is imminent. For this, we go to Jimmy the Toucan. Jimmy's having a bad day. I'll say. He's been tortured for the past six hours and is now being held dunked into a blender. Where the goods are! I told you, I don't know! Better tell me where they are! Alright, fine! They're at the pier! They're at the pier! Just don't kill me! It's too late for that! Rush Avenge my death! Avenge oh, my death! It was Mickey Blue Eyes! Mickey Blue Eyes! Lucky for... ooh. Well, luck is a relative thing. Good citizen was walking by and heard his screams and called 911. The statement was certainly made when death was imminent. Next we go to the suicide of Bobby Shepard. Bobby Shepard is a first year associate for Cooey Perks. Well, at least he was. He's committing suicide tonight. How are you doing it, Bobby? Can't you tell? I'm hanging myself with my own thread. What did you put in your suicide note, Bobby? That Father Harris molested my brother Frankie. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
poor Bobby is dead. But what he doesn't seem to understand is that the statement made before his death must relate to the cause or circumstance of the death to be admissible. Sometimes statements can be used in court made by a puppet who mistakenly thought death was imminent, but lived. That brings us to Ezekiel. Ezekiel, what is this? Bacon? Bacon! Oh, what have I done? I, I'm going to be punished. God's going to kill me. I, I, I'm going to die. But a statement made during an unreasonable fear of death is not admissible. Hey, kid, you're not dead. Now for something completely different. You may have seen the dying declaration in Harrison Ford's movie, The Fugitive. Harrison Ford's character. Harrison Ford's character. Harrison Ford's character must have killed her. Mr. Ford's character. Mr. Ford's character. Wait up. Yeah? What do you have to say about dying declarations? This exception's bullshit. Good luck. It also has historical significance. This is Granny. She's been around forever. When I was a girl, I saw the first use of the dying declaration exception in American law. The year was 1770, and it was the murder trial of the British soldiers responsible for the Boston Massacre. One of the victims, Patrick Carr, told his doctor before he died that the soldiers had been provoked. The doctor's testimony helped defense attorney John Adams to secure an acquittal for some of the defendants and reduce the charges for the others. Good man, John Adams. Okay, Granny, off the stage. You can also observe the dying declaration in Richard II. Oh, but they say the tongues of dying men enforce attention like deep harmony. Where words are scarce, they are seldom spent in vain. For their breath turn, that breath their words in pain. That's it, boys and girls. This is Iraq Glass. Thank you for viewing our production. No puppets were harmed in the making of this film.